Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the learning CAD Sketcher for beginners. Today we're going to be using Blender and CAD Sketcher to create this object. Now this is created from two sketches. So you can see what's known as a profile sketch here and this top sketch, the profile for the extrude. So we've got a extrude going this way and what's known as a revolve. We've, we've taken this sketch and revolved it around in a circle to create this revolution of this object. Now in CAD, they are called two different things. So in CAD, they're called revolve. In Blender, it will be called a spin or the modifier operation is called the screw. For the extrude, this one, which is symmetrical to the plane of this sketch, it's known as a solidify. In the previous video, we looked at creating a sketch on a surface or a sketch on a mesh and creating that second sketch. So in this one, we'll actually be doing this. We'll be creating a sketch upon this revolve and then going a bit deeper into that, how we position the plane and also how we solidify symmetrical to the sketch as well. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Let's have a look how we complete this project. If you enjoy these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash mj3d studio. So we're in Blender. We're going to first delete the center cube by clicking on it and hitting the delete key. I'm going to be using CAD Sketcher. So using the flyout bar from the right hand side, we're going to click on the Sketcher tab and add a new sketch. As we're going to be sketching from the side, we're going to be creating a cross section through the revolve, I'm going to be using the X, Z axis. So we can come around to this side or click on the minus Y or the Y, it doesn't matter which. So we're looking down onto the surface that we're sketching. And we can see this when we click on the rectangle, you can see that's been placed upon that surface there. So we need to make a revolve. So we're looking at the thumb screw from the side and then section off one quarter of that profile and sketching the left hand side. Right mouse button to get the mouse pointer back and we'll highlight this. Click and drag and delete. So to create the profile, we'll use a 2D line. On the right hand side, I've got the continuous draw selected. Allow me to draw a polyline. So to start with, we place some dimension lines in so these become part of the geometry and they're just going to be the top and the side line there so we've got the top line and if this is hard to see let's come over to the edit click on preferences and look at the 3d view open that up come down to the theme so this theme here open that up and we can change the highlighting and the colors in here I'm going to come up, pull this to the side and look at some of the settings here. So we've got this entity scale, which I can increase. You can see this scaling of these lines have increased. So I'm going to set this to something like 1.5. We've got the highlights here, which we may need to change. So we've got the highlighted in the constraints. You can see that when we roll over that. And I've got the highlighting set here to a deep red and the constraints I've just kept as is, but we can change those if we wanted to. Text here, you can see we've got the on gray. This will be white on yours for default and text highlighting is highlighted in a bright white. So we've got that one there and we can change that to whatever we want. Let's come out, the settings are applied straight away and let's dimension these lines. So I'm gonna take the top line first, Right click to get our solver space select tool back. You can select those now, come over to the right hand side, open up tools, and we'll select the distance. So we've got a distance in here now. We highlight the text. This is the reason why I increase the highlighting in these. Click the text, set that. So I selected it with the left mouse button and set that to nine. This side, click on that, set distance and set this one to seven millimeters. So we've got our base shape in here. Let's highlight these arrows and pull them over and up so they're out of the way. 
Now to move this line, we can only move it up and down if we use the line, but if we use the point, we can move this over. I want this point here, hold down shift and click on the center point and put a vertical constraint in there. So we've got that vertical constraint in there. So it's centered over that center point. So when we revolve it, it revolves around this axis. Now we've got this in dimension, let's add the rest of the geometry. So click on the 2D line, hover over this point, you can see it highlighting, click, and come out. See the horizontal constraint kicks in, let that kick in, click once, left mouse button, drop this down, click. And what we're doing is creating the void within there. So I'm gonna come across, up, cross again, and we're creating what's known as a closed piece of geometry. So come across here and come up. And you notice how we snap to that point. If I click now, what happens is that that ends the continuous draw, it ends that polyline because it's snapped and closed the geometry. If it doesn't, then it's not connected up. We right click and add a coincident constraint on there. So right click now to get our Silver Space Select tool back. And we start adding the geometry constraints within here. Select this line, place the distance, and we'll set that highlight, click, distance of three millimeters. Bring this down. Now we've got a drop here, this one here, highlight that, that's gonna be a millimeter. Distance again, click, distance of one mil. I like the arrows, pull them across, and we can pull this down here. So this internal one here is going to be four mil distance. Set that, click on that, and we come down four mil. And bring this arrow up. This distance here, this drop here, distance again. Click on the measurement and set this one to three mil. Now you notice that I set this one to three mil, we've got a three mil distance here as well. What I can do is highlight that arrow, click on that, left click, come down, delete constraint, and take this one, click on it, shift click the other one, which you see that highlight of that line there, let's click that. It's a bit cramped in here, but we can pull these out and set that to equal. So we've got the equal constraint across there. Let's bring these out here. So at the moment you can see this still moves. If I click on the point and bring this across, it still moves. So this length here is also going to be three mil. So we're going to take this one, shift select either this one or this one. As you can see, when I hover over that equality, it shows which line is equal. Let's click on that. Shift click both of those and equality across those. So we still got two degrees of freedom. So we can move this and you can see this one isn't constrained either. Click on that one, distance, and we're gonna set that one to two millimeters. So we have our almost fully constrained sketch. You can see the degrees of freedom is one. That means it can move in one plane of freedom. So you can see it's moving up and down there. Not side to side, I can't move it side to side. If we could move it from side to side, so let's have a look. This, see this point, if we hover over that vertical constraint and on click, the left mouse button. And if we just clicked and clicked off, it will become invisible rather than long click. So we have to go down and come down to our constraints one here and show all or find it in the constraints around here. So let's go show all. We can see that constraint is visible there. So left click and delete. So long left click and delete constraint. So now when we look at our degrees of freedom, it's now two, which means we can move this way and this way. So we got it moving across in this type of manner. So we need to take we can use this one and shift click on this one. 
vertical. And we'll take, and let's say that we take this one here, click that one and shift click this one and make those horizontal. So we've locked this down now, we've got a fully defined sketch and we can change this sketch type to a mesh and we'll leave the sketch. So now we've got something to revolve. So this is a cross section. Let's come over to where it says sketch, double click and type in revolve cross section and hit enter. Also known as profile. So we'll double click that. Let's change that to revolve profile. Makes it easy. So we've got the profile of our revolve. So when we revolve this, let's bring this around this way. We can see it's just a mesh at the moment. When we revolve it, it creates material and comes right the way around here. So let's do that now. Click on the sketch, come down to the wrench or the spanner icon. These are the modifiers. Add modifier and look for the screw, this one here. Looks a bit odd because it's not on the right axis. So we want the Y axis. So we can see that's taking effect there. And we come in the steps, let's smooth this out by increasing the amount of steps. And go 50, something like that. So we've got our evolve in there. Now what we want to do is place a sketch upon this face. To do that, we're going to come over to the left hand side and scroll down. We've got this here. Add work plane on mesh face. If I long click on the left mouse button in here, we can see we've got a number in here. We want the top one, add a work plane on mesh face. Once we selected the tool, select the face and then right click. So we left click on the face, then right click. That's added a plane to that face and you can see that there. This plane has been placed here. The trouble is it hasn't been placed centered on that face. So I need to move this to the center. Now I can drag the plane by the point here again. If I try to drag it by the sides, it's not going to move. Now, if I look on the right hand side and come down to the entities and I click on this point, we can see that we've got movement here. So you can see that if I scroll down, click on that point this is moving here so this is this one this point here that's moving move it to the center round about the center and we can see that these moved these two here and this one stayed the same so this is a z location which is correct we was moving along the x and y so click on this one zero for the x zero for the y click zero for the y Click off. That has now been centered. So we look along the Z, click on the Z. We can see that centered along there. Now we can create a sketch upon here. So let's come over to the right hand side and click add sketch. Now we need to pick the right plane. So let's rotate around and zoom out. And we can see all the planes that are sitting there. So we've got this plane that sits upon this face. Make sure we get the right plane. So click on that. That has added a sketch to that plane. And the underneath has been grayed. So we can see that we've got the revolve, it's grayed, and we've got this center point sitting here. So we can start sketching upon that point. Click on the Z axis. And I want to add some material that basically goes in an arc and is reflected on the other side. So to do that, we'll add a line here. Right click to cancel only once and a line here. Right click to cancel again. And we've got those two. So I'm gonna create an arc between these, but these have to be centered over this axis. We can't do that because we can't actually select that access to make a constraint against. So we need to create something called construction geometry. Now I've still got the line selected. So I'm going to create a line that's not connected. So we'll create a line here and span this all the way over to the right hand side. 
right click to cancel the line so we're back to our normal pointer. Let's create the midpoint constraint against this line and this line. To do that, we take the point of this line, shift click the line, not the points, the line, and create a midpoint constraint. Let's do the same on the other side. For this point, shift click this line, midpoint constraint. Now we've got this line, what we can do is create a midpoint constraint against this point here. So to do that, we take the line, so click the line, let's put it up here, shift click the midpoint, and create the midpoint constraint. That places it upon there. Now, word of warning here, that's Control Z that. If I accidentally added, let's click on this line, and add, say, a vertical constraint in there. So we've got two vertical constraints that are sitting there. I can't move this. As you can see, it's not moving. But if I take this point, we can move it to the left and the right. If I take this line and shift click the center point, like so, and create a midpoint, it's not going to move. We need to delete one of these constraints. So click once, delete constraints, and then it's placed along the center point there. So now I'm going to convert this line to construction geometry. Click on the line, we right click and set construction. It becomes a dotted line. So this won't show when we exit the sketch. It won't affect any geometry. It's just there to help with construction and support these two ends. Set a length across this. So we select the construction geometry. You can see it's highlighted there. If I click off, you can see when we click on it, it highlights. We'll set a distance and we'll set this one to 25 mil. Let's set a height for this one. Distance. And this one's going to be set to three millimeters. Highlight the arrows and pull it off to the left hand side. We'll make this line in here. Now you can see our snapping is taking effect here. So we need to zoom in a bit so we can get to that line. And that's come over. Now I've accidentally zoomed in. Let's zoom back out and come over to the other side and shift click this line here and make those equal. So we've got the two lines equal there. It's starting to look a bit confusing when we've got all these in here, but what we've got is construction line and the two lines on the end. And this is centered and it's locked down. So you can see it's fully defined sketch here. I'm going to create two arcs that come around and connect up. Now the arcs, we haven't got an endpoint and rim point arc. We've just got to add a 2D arc. Now this works by defining a center point. So we look at this axis here and we'll just click somewhere along the axis. And we need to click on an endpoint, this one here, and bring this around. So I want this around this way. Now it's going to be off, but when we join up to this one, you see how that snapped into place there. So let's click. So they snapped into place across there. Right click to get the mouse pointer back on the solver select tool. Take that center point, let's drag this out this way. We're going to have to drag it out further to add the arc in here. So let's take the arc and add some diameter on this. So the diameter kicks in here, so you can see it here. And let's set this one, let's set this to 200 and see what we get. So we get a 200 millimeter diameter on that one. And you can see the diameter is right over here. And we can pull this in. And you see that arrow, how it connects up to this arc. If this is getting on your nerves in the background, what we can do is come up to the sketch for that one. So we've got the sketch for this one here and hide it so it's out of the way. So we're just dealing with the geometry. Let's click on the Z so we can see that there. 
we need another arc the other side so the same applies take the arc set the center point connect up to your first point create the arc connect up to the end point right click move the center point out and if we can't move it far enough well we just add if i can get in let's zoom in a bit all we want to do is take the arc Shift select the other arc and make them equal. So we've got a quality going across there and we've got a fully defined sketch. Again, set this one to mesh and leave the sketch. So we've got the top part of our model. Let's bring back the other sketch. So I hid the previous sketch. Let's show that. So you can see that sitting there. This at the moment is not. 3D, it's just 2D, so we've got to add a solidify modifier to this one. So click on the sketch we've just created, add modifier, and we're going to use a solidify. Thickness, let's bring this up to about, let's try 10 millimeters and see what that looks like. That's too much, so we'll set this to say 5 mil. And we want the offset going this way upwards. So we'll set this to one and click off. So you can see that goes up this way. Now I actually want this set back in the middle. So I can bring this back to decide where I want this set. So we've got the offset from one to minus one. And we'll set this one in the middle to zero. That's in the middle there. And we've got our shape so far. Let's add some more thickness to it. So eight mil. And we've actually built the model, but we need to boolean these together to make them as one. So we added the modifier to the top, to this modifier here. Let's shrink that down. I'm gonna add another modifier. So click on add modifier and come in and use a boolean. So now we've added the boolean modifier. The boolean modifier requires two, two things to boolean together. We want union because we want to union the items together. Where it says object, use the eyedropper. Now this is on this object here. We want to click on the other object. So sketch 001, come up. And we can hide the sketches in here. So 001 has been booleaned in. You can see it's still sitting there. So let's hide that. And now we've got our finished model. So through this one, we've learned how to use a revolve. We can show that profile there. See the revolve in there. And use another sketch upon the top to extrude out from the top. And we've extruded symmetrical to that sketch because we set the offset to zero on the modifier. So the solidify modifier, we look at that for that sketch. Thickness is eight, the offset here is zero. So we've gone symmetrical to that sketch with the solidifier. And then we've brought both of them together with the final boolean of the union. And we can play with these. We can see the intersection there, the union and the difference so we want union for those two. And that's it. That's how we create a two operation model using CAD Sketcher with what's known in CAD as a revolve, known in Blender as a screw, and a symmetrical extrude known in Blender as a solidifier with offset of zero. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you again soon. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.